Hi everyone, yes it's me again, David Spreadborough, the international trainer here at AMP Software. In the past few screencasts, I've looked at the interface of five and then taken you through a complete walkthrough of all the current filters. This time we're going to be looking at the information presented by five on the multimedia that you're examining. Well is there data held within a file that can assist you in establishing the correct output size and shape? Why do you see one size in a proprietary player but then see another one when you drop it into 5. How many times have you looked at a video and not known that there was actually an audio stream also in the file? Never? Well, it's happened to me. What about other camera views? Could you have missed a video that may have provided further information? When receiving multimedia evidence, it's vitally important to understand the data being presented. The visual representation and the underlying data go hand in hand. Through a forensic analysis, we can ensure that the facts are identified and we can make better decisions based on those facts. We can also highlight inconsistencies or acquisition errors quickly, giving us more opportunity to return to a scene and correctly retrieve footage. After dragging in a test file, the first information is gained directly from the video loader filter settings. What video engine is being used to decode and play the video? FFMS is the enhanced engine that enables real-time frame accurate scrubbing. This is the first thing that you need to note. If your file is being decoded by another engine, then the information that you get from some of the other tools may be related to how the file is being read. Next up, we have the inspector tool. This is the first tool within the tools window. Under details, I can see immediately my current frame position, the important frame type information, and then the size of the image or video itself. I can also see if the image or video is color or grayscale. Some information is always displayed down at the bottom within the status bar. Here I can see the file name, the pixel dimensions again, how many frames are in the video, and the current frame rate. We can now select our file info tool. This gives us a quick overview as presented to the decoder by the container. Now the channels relate to color channels, not audio. I can see that the codec is being detected as H.264 and after the frame information, I have the various aspect ratio details. You must remember that no corrections are being calculated for this summary it's using the raw data only. Further down, we have what color range is being used. Again, this is important to note if the video is very dark and you need to expand the color range to increase the luminance values in an MPEG video. Lastly, we have the stream information, where only a single video stream is being detected. If an audio stream was detected, I may wish to then change my video engine to FFMS with audio. You may be faced with some questions now. A common one arises after viewing a file in a proprietary player and the footage is presented at 640 by 480. Even the images are exported at 640 by 480. Why then, when we load the raw file into 5, does it detect the pixel dimensions to be 704 by 480? This is the sampled size, the amount of pixels that make up the recorded image. We're decoding the pixels and playing them as they were recorded. Some players are able to read information within the frames to change how the image is displayed. This information can be seen by heading into the advanced file info. This summary now reads the file's metadata at a frame level. I can now see that the sample aspect ratio of each pixel is 10 by 11. Now this results in a display aspect ratio of 4x3. 704 times 10 equals 7040. 480 times 11 equals 5280. 7040 divided by 5280 equals 1.3333 or 4x3. Moving to the next tab, this presents the media info report. 
a number of new pieces of information may be displayed here, including the exact profile used for encoding and the color space. This information could be used in video authentication cases, when a specific device only records in certain profiles, but the footage being decoded has something different. The FF Probe tab continues to build up the level of information available to us. An important result from this tool relates to the detection and reporting of the container's time base. This can be very important if a stream can be read with multiple video engines or the stream has been placed into a container after export. Changes in the time base can result in different durations, so careful comparisons should be made during any initial assessment. I'll be looking much deeper into time bases in an upcoming video or blog post. Lastly, in the current tab list, we have EXIF tool. This is mainly used when reading images or video from consumer devices like cameras or cell phones. But the presentation of file creation and modified times may be of benefit to you when dealing with CCTV exports. I've now dropped in another test video. With the file info tool, I can detect that there are seven streams four video, two audio, and one subtitle. Many containers and codecs are now supported by the Convert DVR tool to automatically extract all these as separate files, and we're working hard to support others. So far, we've looked at videos that support standards and that have been created correctly. What happens then when we have some anomalies? I've pixelated the view here for YouTube. But with this file, there's something strange going on with the frames per second and the duration. It's been decoded using the FFMS engine, but when I play the video, it plays very fast. By taking a look at the advanced file info and reading the media info tab, I can see that the file has a frame rate of 23.976. So what happens if I change the engine to direct show? This engine detects the right frame rate from the MPEG container and it plays the correct speed. But there's a problem. I can't scrub back easily. Well, let's go back to the FFMS engine and simply change the frame rate with the change frame rate filter. It's all now fixed. To finish off, let's look at this file. 5 initially uses direct show to decode the video. FFMS is the default, so why has this been overridden in this case? Microsoft's Direct Show Engine is one of the multimedia frameworks built into the Windows operating system. From this, I know that a system codec is being used to decode the visual data. So we now move over to the File Info tool within the Tools section. We know that the video is currently being decoded through Direct Show, so the information here is going to be limited by that decoder. The file extension, the letters after the name, is also important to note and I can see that this is .dav and this is a non-standard extension. It's at this point then that I'll scrub through the video. I don't just want to play it, I need to establish if frame accurate seeking and navigation around the video is possible. And very quickly I identify that it's not possible to scrub through the footage as I want. I'll definitely be needing to change my video engine. As the data has reported the lack of any audio stream, I can select FFMS. And after hitting apply, we receive an error. Well, why is this? Well, it comes down to the DAV container. There are many proprietary containers that simply hold standard streams, and the DAV container is one of these. As a result, we need to attempt to place the stream into a standard container, and this is easily completed through the convert DVR tool. The workflow for using this tool is very simple, and I'll be taking a closer look at this tool in a future screencast. For now though, you can see that I've selected to convert this file only, and I'm asking it to copy the stream if possible before attempting to transcode. Copying the stream is the best option, as it's quick and you retain all the vital encoding data. The stream has now been placed into an MKV container and it's automatically loaded into a new chain. I'm using the hide selection filter again to distort the footage. 
The choice of container is all completed within the Convert DVR interface and you may want to try different containers to see how they deal with your evidential data and what information is reported. The fact that I'm now using a new file is all documented within the software and the original file can be reviewed under the original file tab. This will also be automatically entered into my report for full transparency of my process. You'll now see more details under the file info tool as the file is being decoded using Five's powerful FFMS video engine. Now you may have noticed that the frame count using Direct Show was 1,798 frames. Well here is 1,801 frames. What's all that about? Again, it all comes down to how the video data is being decoded and different engines will read a file in different ways. In this instance, Direct Show was not reading the end few frames. It's vitally important to identify and document these anomalies as they could affect further processing decisions further down the line. Frame accurate scrubbing and searching is now possible due to the stream being indexed and read correctly. Well, let's go back and look at the advanced file information tool. Taking a closer look at these aspect ratios, I can quickly determine that the frames have no metadata controlling how the image should be corrected. This is common in bare video streams as the data is usually proprietary to the individual manufacturer and hidden away somewhere within the stream. We're going to have to use our own knowledge and eyes when correcting the output size and aspect ratio. We can read the media info output and also the FF probe. Remember, every container, AVI, MP4, MKV, will all be read differently and different information will be available to you. It is again vitally important to conduct tests with different engines and containers to identify issues that may cause incorrect interpretation. With this file, we're lucky that it has an embedded timestamp. So from this, and by doing a bit of frame counting, I can establish the correct frame rate. Now the data had all presented 25 frames per second, but remember, this was added by the container that we're using. We could confirm our findings by utilizing the correct DAV player and see how that was playing back the file. So by adding in the change frame rate filter to five frames per second, we now have the correct presentation speed. This process is all for presentation output. In-depth analysis of the frame durations for speed and motion investigation is a separate process and I'll be looking much further at this in the future. From this point on though, I can resize, adjust aspect ratio and complete any process that I require for this piece of video evidence. I hope that this quick tour around the information reporting in the current version of AMP5 has been helpful to you. We're continuing to develop the tools and reporting of this important data, so keep your eyes on the AMP blog for future updates. We have more videos in the pipeline, so until the next time, bye for now.